Hello, Hamish here from mortgagesonline.co.nz with a quick update on some of the changes which will be uh, coming up in first, uh, most probably on the 1st of September. So um, the RBNZ will be firming up these changes on the 10th of August, but it, it, it'll probably most likely look like uh, what they've already uh, released. Um, two things will be happening really. Uh, first of all, the deposit requirement is increasing to 40%. Okay, so you'll need a 40% deposit if you're investing. Uh, whether that be cash deposit or by way of uh, equity from another property. Okay. Uh, second thing it's doing is it's levelling the playing field for Auckland or outside of Auckland. There's no distinction anymore, right? So it's 40% wherever you're buying. Okay. Why is the RBNZ doing this? Well, they've only got so many tools in, in their kit, right? Um, they can't ban cash buyers from overseas buying up properties and things like that if, if that is what's going on. Um, they, they can only do what they can and um, they're trying to they're trying to make things safer okay should the market experience a sudden downturn there are a few exemptions from these rules okay construction loans and full turnkey purchases are exempt okay so um, and mainly because these actually increase the supply of houses uh, refinancing is exempt so you it's not going to stop you from shopping for a good rate for your investment portfolio okay um, some a second family home in certain cases may be exempt uh, batches for example okay um, and there is the banks are allowed to let through a very small number of people <coughs> about five percent of new lending um, they're about to, they're allowed to let that through outside of these rules okay so but I, I would guess that they would be in the rare case the banks would probably hold that aside for people that really kind of get stuck in a bind or something like that um, what does it mean for the future? Well, we it, it's hard to say really, but something similar happened in November 2015 when the Reserve Bank increased their deposit require, requirements for Auckland investors from 20 to 30%. What we saw was a huge amount of um, transactions taking place just before the change. So a lot of people trying to use their pre-approvals up and, and get in the market before the change. So we saw that happen. Um, the couple of months following November, it, it died down a little bit, okay, but prices didn't really come back any, and um, sort of January, February, there was, the market was starting to hit its stride again uh, in Auckland. Um, but there are a couple of interesting areas where we could start to see some changes. As I mentioned, batches, uh, family home, uh, kind of lifestyle family type um, holiday homes. Uh, what you could see is, is if people are kind of um, looking at a scenario where their next investment purchase is potentially their last one for a while, they might, might start to think of, of uh, something which they can actually use for their family as well later on. Um, especially, especially if batches are, uh, you know, if they're exempt from this, then, you know, there's a lot of people that, where that, that will be the main thing that they can buy. Um, now, construction loans and full turnkey buying off uh, fresh developments will start to look a lot more attractive. They're ex they should be exempt for most of them. Um, and also, uh, one other thing is really um, businesses and commercial properties, really. Um, the gap between uh, purchasing a business or a commercial property and a residential house has been around the cash flow, the term of the loan, but also around the deposit requirement. Well, that deposit requirement thing is going to start to look very similar. If you're buying an investment property, you might have to put 40% down. If you're buying a business or a commercial property, you, you kind of have to put around 40% down as well. So suddenly, you know, you, you may start to compare those all those options if, if, um, uh, if, yeah, if, if the differences are so small. So yeah, we'll keep you up to date um, as things, uh, new information comes in. Um, what, one last thing really is that I think um, with these rules, if they do, if they're going to do what, what is intended, the RBNZ will have uh, opened the doors to themselves a little bit for lowering interest rates potentially as well in the future. So um, I guess the silver lining for, for investors is that, that there might be lower interest rates coming um, for investors and homeowners. Um, but thank you for watching and um, yeah, see you next time.